I said, I went mad he hit the three. But did this um, bitch just call me Holmes? That is. <laughs> you know? Like, wait, what? And so it set up for a really uh, interesting game. Because I remember one time I came down and I dunked it on him. He laying on the ground. He fouled me and I'm pointing. And he said, hey, Rook. I said, what? Oh, my God, bro. I didn't even see that. Bro, this clock back on his face, that's all I needed to see, bro. This was a nasty. And if, oh, my, and it's an N1. Oh, no, Larry Bird, you canceled for like two days, two games at least. Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Skylar Reacts. Or if it's the first time, welcome to Skylar Reacts. Today, we're going to react to some Larry Bird stories that prove that he's the best trash talker in history. Listen, right? Larry Bird looked like one of those guys like that would get picked last on like a basketball pickup game or whatnot. But when I tell you this guy is trash, like you would never think in a million years Larry Bird is probably one of the biggest trash talkers in basketball history. Listen, this man is different, all right? So we're going to check it out. I hope y'all enjoy. As always, like, comment, subscribe, join the fam. And yeah, let's get it. Larry Bird was one of the biggest trash talkers in basketball. And a lot of people say, really? You know, they thought it was Reggie or Charles. Bird used to tell me, look at him like, you're supposed to be a great defender, right? And I'm going to make sure I tell you where I'm going to shoot the ball at. And he said, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to shoot it right in your face. And I'm looking at this guy Damn. like, he's nuts. <laughs> I'm going to go shoot this fucking jumper in your face right there in that cone. And it's going to be your Christmas present. I'm going to wrap it up and bust your head open. And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> if he tell you and it's like, you would never think in a million years, out of all basketball players, Larry Bird is talking like that, bro. Larry Bird. Oh, my God, man. Like, I was shocked when I heard this. <laughs> he going to hit a shot in a certain place. Well, when I heard the stories. He's going to do just that, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Been a better player each step I took. I was able to look more than the other guys. I had a green light. Mm. I can make plays. But I always knew early on, especially when I was a junior, senior high school, that probably the outcome of the game was going to depend on me. Like, look at Larry Bird. He looked like such a wholesome guy that's just there just to have fun. Just play basketball the way it's supposed to be played and just have fun. But nah, he just having fun and busting people's ass. Like, let, when I tell you Larry Bird was demolishing players, I'm talking about people, players like Michael Jordan. I think Michael Jordan won, like, what, one or two games against Larry Bird and the Celtics? Bro, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for Larry Bird getting injured, we, the things, the way we look up certain players, it wouldn't be the same. I'm telling you. Well, yeah, I interviewed uh And I stand on that. Uh, Gary Payton, a venomous trash talker. And I asked him who the most vicious trash talker he's ever encountered. He said Larry Bird. Oh, no question. Bird talk shit shit? Like, like, like we talk Let or like... Let me tell y'all something. Bird used to tell me, look at him like, I'm gonna go shoot this motherfucker jumper in your face right there in that cone. Mm. And it's gonna be your Christmas present. I'm gonna wrap it up and Ooh. bust your head open. All that shit. He talk... You imagine Bird telling you that on Christmas Day. Cause you know they be playing like the big games on Christmas Day. It's supposed to be like a little preview of what the the playoffs supposed to be like. Listen, if Larry Bird had told that, oh my God, if he said that on Christmas Day, listen, <laughs> he might be the goat. <laughs> Bird used to tell me, look here, Mike. I'm gonna go shoot this motherfucker jump in your face right there in that cone. Christmas present. And it's gonna be your Christmas present. I'm gonna wrap mm. it up and bust your head open. All that shit. He told me, young fella, let me tell you something. I can shoot a jumper anywhere I want to. You're supposed to be a great defender, right? I'm going to make sure I tell you where I'm going to shoot the ball at. And I was mm. like, man, come on now. You, you're not going to shoot the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, I'm going to take you over in that corner right there. You see it over there by my bench, right? And I'm going to give you something, and it's going to be this jumper. So he went <laughs> right to that corner, and I'm up on him. I'm under him. And he said, young fella, what did I tell you I was going to do? And he turned around, raised up, Ooh. and all drawn. Oh my, wait, y'all did not read, bro, look at his footwork. I tell you, bro, I used to talk crap about like the 90s and, and the 80s basketball, but there's a few players, right, including Michael Jordan. I'm a big super LeBron fan, but I respect like Michael Jordan. I respect, I'm a, I'm a fan of basketball, all right? But when I tell you there's certain players in the 90s that are just so special, oh my God, man. You see that pump fake with a spin and then net? And he said, young fella, what did I tell you I was going to do? And he turned around, raised up, and it was all drawn. That's, that's like playing 2K. Oh, my God. And he said, young fella, what did I tell you I was going to do? And he turned around, raised up, and it was all drawn. Mm. <laughs> and I said, shit, I ain't going to mess with you no more. He's the coldest <laughs> dude I ever seen with that shit, man. Everybody be talking about these great greats. They'll be always mentioning him. He was the shit. 
Yeah, shit, man. He'll give it to you any way he wanted to. Larry Bird was cold. Mm. Bird didn't talk trash to you, Oh, my he? God. Bird talked yeah. trash to everybody. <laughs> I always tell the story about Larry Bird. I remember him, he was cursing under his breath. And I asked him, I said, Larry, what's going on with you? He says, you guys are being disrespectful to me. And I says, what are you talking about? He says, you guys are putting a white guy on me. <laughs> That's disrespectful. I just started laughing. I had no comeback. But he says, he says. The, the fact that Larry Bird's saying that, does that just to show you how laid back of a cool guy he is. Like, he not like a stuck up, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, afraid to say certain things. Like, he just like a laid back dude. That just ready to just demolish you, like, on the court. You feel me? <laughs> it's disrespectful when y'all put a white guy on me. Larry said, I'm insulted that they would put a sorry dude like you on me. He said, no, I don't even want to play no more. He would drop the ball and take a turnover. And I'm looking at this guy like, he's nuts, you know? The story goes that when he played against Denver, they had a guy named John Hansley, a white guy, a really good defender, okay. right? Okay, okay. They put him on Larry, and Larry was weighing his ass out. Mm. And Larry would run by the bench and tell Doug Moe, who was the coach, yep. coach yep. get him off me. That's disrespectful. <laughs> put a black guy on me. Because I, when I he played you. back in the day, that's all he played against was brothers. That's So hilarious. he was like, hey, I had to torch his ass so they understand. <laughs> and Larry got you know who this, like, trash talking in? Like a story is kind of remind me of a little bit is and um Anthony Edwards, he kind of he kind of gave me like that confidence. Cause he always talking smack, always even against Bronny. When Bronny first like clocked in, bro, he was talking smack off the rip. So Anthony Edwards is kind of like one of those players that you know kind of remind me of the Larry Bird stories. Others. That's just having that confidence. So he was like, hey, I had to torch his ass so they understand. <laughs> and Larry got on the roll, so I shoot the ball. He said, Every shot was going in. All right, he runs by Frank Layden. That was behind the backboard. And Larry got on the roll, so I shoot the ball. He said, Every shot was going in. All right, he runs by Frank Layden, who's the funniest guy in, in the league. And Frank is coaching, and Larry says to him, Hey, Frank, don't you have anybody on that bench who can guard me? He goes, so Nobody out here can. Frank looked down at the bench and goes, no. <laughs> Along with Steve Jones and Rick Barry, this is Bob Neal. Just moments before the American Airlines Sheraton long distance shootout. The All Star game is in Dallas, the first three point contest. And he just starts looking at guys, doesn't say a word, and people are getting kind of nervous. Everybody's He's sitting there, everybody's in. real quiet. You knew the guys, but you never were around. Yeah. And nobody's really saying anything. So I walk in and look around, and then he finally speaks and says, I'm just, just looking to see who's going to finish second. And says, I hope all you guys in here are thinking about second place because I'm winning this. Excuse me? <laughs> Did you really say that? Who's playing for a second? Yeah. Not a good luck, not a like, oh, go out there and break a leg or nothing. Just be like, I hope y'all okay just get in second place because I'm going to win this. Like, who, like, who says that, bro? Like, what? Yeah, I feel so bad. like in there. What were, you, what were you thinking when you made that announcement to the room? Just messing with all those guys? I know going into that, I remember in the locker room, Robert said something that there's no way in the hell I was going to win that three-point contest. So I knew right then I, I had to win. <laughs> that chick said my name on it for a week, man. Mm. I knew I was going to win this thing. I've been practicing it. My teammates said I wasn't going to win it, but I, I came back and uh, lucked out, really. Bird would luck out again the next year, but in 1988, it looked like his luck had finally run out. He certainly doesn't have that normal Bird rhythm going on. Damn. Seconds remaining, has only seven, has to be 15. That's eight, make it nine. And 10. Mm. And 11, as we're counting. 13. A huge rack that time for Bird. He's still got to drop one here quickly. 14, this is a tie for the money. Yo! Larry Bird, at the Larry Bird is so clutch. Like, I have never seen, obviously, his highlights. They want to show, like, when he misses, really. But I have never seen Larry Bird miss, like, an important shot or, like, or something like, or he say he's going to do something. I just don't do it. Like, he always come through so clutch. Like, I don't understand. He knew exactly what the Even Michael Jordan's amazed, like, bro, like, this guy just won't lose. Like, Gore was, he knew that that ball was going to win the competition for him, and it's almost like he did it in dramatic fashion just to make it more fun. He knew it when he let it go and was headed for the winner's circle. He didn't take off his top yet. Oh, yeah. I didn't see what he took off his top. Larry used to come in the locker rooms. He'd be getting his ankles taped, and he'd say, you know, hey, ball boy, run in and go find the scoring record in this building. You know, he needed those kind of challenges. He had accomplished every goal. We hadn't lost a game on the trip. And Larry told all of us players and the media, too, Warren and I's the last game of the trip. 
I'm gonna play this one left handed at least at least through three quarters. And it was in a time oh, where I remember you know, was still coming off the bench. And and so Larry scores his sixth point on a left-handed shot. And I'll never forget him. But Kelly yells it out. And Mikhail goes, hey Jerome, when do we start shooting right-handed? <laughs> and at the end of three quarters, I get 27 points left-handed. Oh. Well, left-handed is one thing, but when the game got... Larry Bird got so bored in the game, he said, you know what, I'm going to score my last few points, my last, you know what I'm saying? My last few points on my opposite hand, just because. Just because I'm bored and I just wanted to make it more entertaining for the fans, I'm going to just score with my opposite hand you know my non-dominant hand because i'm just that good close i had to go back to the right one he could hold like, all these things in his head during the game what so the he'd, hell? he'd have a shooting drill at the old boston garden 4 30 in the afternoon i was an early guy i'd set up early the garden would be dark you know, late in the afternoon by himself dark garden come out with an equipment guy and just do the perimeter shoot for half hour and all you heard was swishing if he missed a shot during that thing he'd say that the bull gang set up something wrong with the rim you know otherwise that never that would have gone in i'd get there early plug in my stone age computer right next to the bench he'd come over he called me scoop he said scoop what are you working on i'm saying i'm doing an early story then i'd say well i'm doing an early edition newspaper story about your free throw streak. You are approximating the NBA record for consecutive free throws, so don't miss one tonight or I'll look bad in the paper. <laughs> How much was it? Sure enough, first half, he goes to the line for two and the foul line is lined up right where we're sitting if he looks over. He's at the line, he makes the first. He looks over and winks at me. He looks over and winks at me before he makes the second. <laughs> I mean, guys don't do that today. <laughs> and he would- Always thinking about these things, it's like paying off a bet in the middle of a game. He was doing two things at once. Well, you had the bird night. I had the bird night. Orleans, yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> and the fact is, because bird is not like a short guy whatsoever. So the fact that he's that tall and that that much of a good shooter is insane. Because usually, like the smaller guys, usually the better shooter. And the taller guys, except for like Katie. Katie is like an animal. Katie is literally like made in the lab. There's no way you can be seven foot. And literally shoot like Stephen Curry, have the handles of like, you know what I'm saying? Like he have decent handles and it just like, he does a scoring machine. So he's different. But the fact that Larry Bird is that tall and that much of a shooter, regardless of having the three point line or not, like, come on, bro. Different. That was a tough night, man. <laughs> but did you, nobody was guarding. Because before uh, Steph Curry, there was a uh, Larry Bird and then there was a uh, Ray Allen and so forth and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So. It's it's kind of like damn, bro. Bird, were they? Like Larry Bird has had like everything, you know, the passing, the IQ, the trash talking, the shooting. It just yeah. We were trying. You were trying no, to. No, but when when a guy is literally coming up the court, calling his shots. It's in that game. We're on the free throw line, and he's like, he literally says, "It's off the glass. Who's next? Where you want this one from?" Uh, and he just made one after mm. another. And, and he just tortured him mentally. He tortured all of them. I think Bird oh. went by the bench one time, too. He fell in a bench. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, <laughs> and he called that one. That was the one where he fell in it. He literally said, oh, no. uh, off the glass, into the trainer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. His last shot, he said, uh, in the trainer's lap, coming down the court. Uh, he shot this high rainbow. Uh, it goes in. Ricky bumps Ooh. into him and he knocks him on our trainer's lap. So it was exactly what he said. He was Antoine Carr and Cliff Levingston got fined by Fratello, I think. For and, and Eddie Johnson for celebrating. Celebrating Bird. Yeah, it was the best film session. Every time I see, when I see Mike, we still laugh. God, it's it was so a, good. It was the greatest film session ever because. I don't get it. Oh, why would you find the guys for hyping up? I get, I understand like it's their opponents. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to like, you know, get the opponents going, but at the same time, it's like, it's basketball. So, you know, the guys that's like cheering on the bench, they're a fan of basketball, regardless of who is the person that's making the moves or the basket and whatnot. It's impressive to see. If someone is talking trash, saying like, hey, I'm going to make this shot at this position in this game, and then this is going to happen afterwards, and it happened exactly the way how he said it. Anyone will be cheering and be like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what? You'll swear basketball is rigged. So, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't like the fact that they find the guys. Maybe have like a little talk like, hey, I know it's amazing to see, but keep it down a little bit because we want to get the uh, rival teams going. But, yeah, it's, it's part of the fan, bro. It's, it's entertainment at the end of the day. As a, as a basketball fan who is at home sitting down watching TV and I see the opponents, like the whole bench going crazy, bro, something is awesome is happening and I'm here for it. So 
Was that back then? It's not a bad thing to be like, you know, to having to like find the guys, bro. Like, come on. You know, you watch the real game and just went, you know, with a video and Mike rewound the celebration 20 times. And they show a shot of our bench. Cliff Livingston and Eddie Johnson are standing up giving each other high five. I mean, everybody was entertained by this. Even mm -hmm. the guys on the Atlanta they bench. They got five for that, I heard. Yeah. Watch this. Watch they the reactions five. on the Atlanta bench. <laughs> <laughs> you see Scotty the Hayes put them laughing. Yeah. Watch Cliff Levingston over here. I think yeah, this is I Cliff. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding? And Fratello wouldn't let it go. He just kept rewinding. <laughs> <laughs> Showing the guys. You remember they're giving each other high five. And then, and then somebody falls off the bench. Yeah, too. that was Eddie Johnson. Yeah. Eddie Johnson falls off the bench in laughter and. Antoine Carr and Cliff gives each other high five. And our film session was 20 minutes of that. And, uh, Damn. Yeah. And so it was a bad night. The first game against Larry Burke, it was shocking. And I'm a rookie, you know. I go shake his hand, and he put both hands behind his back. And I'm saying, okay, he's getting his head ready to play. First play of the game, he says, I don't know where they got you guarding me, Holmes. And he shoots a three. I was pissed. <laughs> Holmes? No, but could you call me Holmes? You might be like, I ain't shaking your hand, Holmes. <laughs> Bro, Carly Bird is such a different dude. <laughs> I ain't shaking your back, Holmes. Homeboy, like the fuck. You know, I said I was mad he hit the three, but did this some bitch just call me Holmes? <laughs> that is <laughs> no. like, wait, what? And so it's set up for a really uh, interesting game. Cause I remember one time I came down and I dunked it on him. He laying on the ground. He fouled me, and I'm pointing. And he said, hey, Rook. I said, what? Oh, my God, bro. I didn't even see that. Bro, this clock back and his face, that's all I needed to see, bro. This was a nasty. And if, oh, my, and it's an N1. Oh, no, Larry Bird, you canceled for like two days, two games at least. I dunked it on him. He laying on the ground. Ooh. He fouled me. And I'm pointing. And he said, hey, Rook. I said, what? He said, I like you, you you know, he said, you got balls, but I'm still going to get 30 on your ass, <laughs> you know? <laughs> he got about 38, so he kind of proved his point. But I had to pay my dues. I wasn't upset about that because, you know, back then, you know, as a rookie, you know, you got to pay your dues. Simple. Nah, nah, Larry Bird, you getting dunked on by a rookie? Listen, listen. <laughs> I didn't even know he was a rookie and he dunked on Larry Bird. Nah, that's insane. He got about 38, so he kind of proved his point. But I had to pay my dues. I wasn't upset as about a rookie? that because, yeah, you know, you back then, respect. you know, as a rookie, you know, you got to pay your dues. Simple as that. It was funny. The first time that I played in my rookie year, I guarded Larry Bird, and it took me about 10 minutes to realize I should be probably guarding him instead of staring at him. <laughs> you know? And he came down. Was, it was funny. He came down one time, and Mark West was the center on our team, and Larry looked at me, and then he looked at Mark, and he said, uh, Mark, I'm going to go down. I'm going to come off the screen. I'm going to catch it right there. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to shoot it in the rookie's face, and then I'm going to run down the floor. And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. That just happened. But did he talk to you, or you weren't he good enough? He talked through me. He never, he never, he never addressed me. I love that. Like, I wasn't even there. And did Mark West? Mark West was going. Mark was like, all right, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. He probably will. Play good more. luck. And then he did. He did it. But there he was, did there that. was nothing I could do about it. That's he crazy. He backed up whatever he said. If he tell you you're going to hit a shot to a certain place, or if he's going to take you down to the post, turn around, hit a fadeaway J, oh. he's going to do just that. And not or if he's going to take you down to the post, turn around, hit a fadeaway J, oh he's going to do just that, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Uh, these guys came in together uh, in 81. There's Kevin, there's Larry, there's Robert, Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge. They knew what each other could do. And what I did was said, okay, let's see what's, what's happening out there. And you'd see uh, Larry shooting the three-pointer, and then i call a timeout, mm. and, and they didn't count the three-pointer. Larry just hit what would have been the game when he shot the KC called timeout. It won't count. It does not count. Wait, no way. No way. The three-pointer, and then I call a timeout, and they didn't count. They had to go to the replay, right? Because I don't, he, damn, that's a, that's a terrible timeout. I mean, uh. About the three-pointer. Larry just hit what would have been the game when he shot, but KC called timeout. It won't count. It does not count. Damn. Boston had called a timeout. Larry came back to the bench and, you know, he was a little upset. So he's very upset with that. So I diagrammed the play. He says, heck with the play, Case. Hey, guys, when I come back after timeout, I'm going to go right to the same spot. And I'm going to kick it in. Give me the ball and tell all the rest of the guys to get out of the way. I said, shut up, Larry. 
I'm the coach here. Okay. All right. Dennis, you take the ball out, give it to Kevin, then you throw it to Larry, and everybody get the hell out of the way. <laughs> Celtics are down by two points, and Bird is out by the three-point line, and he's being guarded by a guy named Johnny Hot. He goes down before the ball is thrown in, and he's standing right in front of the Phoenix bench, and he looks at all the guys on the bench and says, Yeah, I'm just fixing to bust the three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. <laughs> and he says, uh, Watch my hand as I follow through. And, you know, Johnny High sort of, sort of smiles and laughs about it. And I was supposed to cut off the high post and post up for a second and then go across and, and set a pick. Well, I came off the pick and I was wide open and I stood there waiting for the ball. I had a smaller guy to post up and, and Larry just waved me out of the way saying, get out of here, get out of the way. And then he just turns around and shoots a perfect rig. As the ball's in the air, he kind of oh turns towards God. the Phoenix bench. Bro, what? Bro, he didn't even plant his feet. He didn't even like, he just catch, turn around and shoot it. Like, this is what I'm talking about. It's just like, I don't think we have a guy in today's game that's like, that's that dominant on a team, on their team. You feel me? Like, who is there, like, saying, give me the ball? Because usually, like, nowadays, you have, like, two stars, two to three and on your starter. So it's like, who is their closer? Who is the, who is the guy that's like, no, give me the ball. It's going to be in my hands. Like, I don't think there's anyone like that nowadays. Is. And I also want to point out, why they always have a rookie guarding Larry Bird? It always a rookie guarding him. Answer yells, told you so. <laughs> running to the locker room. As he continues on to the dressing room. Now, that's what you call arrogance. <laughs> and from that time, I learned uh, to run Larry's play, not the coach's play. <laughs> he wanted the light on him. He wanted the focus. And he wanted that ball. And in case he would ever call somebody else's play, Larry would just say, no, no, no. I'm shooting this ball, as he would. I get a charge when I tell someone on the opposing team that I'm going to hit the last second shot and then do it. That's what it's all about. High game, 13 seconds to play. Celtics basketball. During the timeout, I'm going through a play. And about that time, Larry steps in and says, uh, Coach, uh, why don't you just give me the ball and tell everybody to get out of the way? It's Larry. He really wants the ball, he wants the ball. After the timeout, we walked back on the court, and then Xavier was guarding him. So he tells Xavier, he says, I'm getting the ball. I said, I know I'm going to be waiting. And he said, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to shoot it right in your face. Mm. Five, and Bird has the basketball. Look out. Ooh. Larry Bird a, just a phenomenal the way that... He came out when we had about that ex exact spot and shot a shot right in my face. And, you know, he was like, I didn't need to leave two seconds on the clock. I walked back to the sideline like, damn. Larry Bird <laughs> is one of the biggest trash talkers in basketball and, and a lot of people say really you know they thought it was reggie or charles larry bird talked more trash on the basketball court than, than anybody i've ever played against so we playing him the Crazy. last play he says uh to james worthy he says you guys don't have to worry about it i'm gonna go right over there at that corner <laughs> and i'm gonna catch it and i'm gonna shoot it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie the game or win the game whatever the case may be they take the ball out and i think it was either danny or or, or um DJ? The late, great DJ. Yeah. You a DJ coming down, right, with the ball. Oh, great DJ. That's good. <laughs> so pass it to Larry. He's in that corner. Now I got to go out and close Larry Bird out. So as I'm running out to Larry Bird, he's talking trash to me. I don't know why you're running out here. <laughs> Who says that in the middle of the game? <laughs> he said, I'm going to wait till you get one step away from me and I'm going to shoot it right in your face. I didn't know back then, I know back then, like a lot of these fans and whatnot had no clue Larry Bird was like this too because I don't think they had like, you know, like the mics on the players and stuff now these days, like the technology and whatnot now. That's why I wish like on the stars themselves, they should have like, like a, what is it? Like a, I won't say R rated, but like an adult rated like version of basketball where you can hear like the stars on the on the court like talk like communicate. I wish I wish there was like a way you could watch basketball and hear them communicate because I want to hear the conversation on the court like the trash talking or like the plays that's being called. I want to hear it, bro. So I got one step away. He shoots it all net. Three pointer. Mm. Take the ball out, man, curl right to the corner, caught the shot, <laughs> shot a three. <laughs> game over. It. It's like, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> and he turned to me and said, You did all that running for nothing. And he was saying in such a calm way that you didn't think it was trash talking, <laughs> but it's trash talking. You, you're not going to tell me you're going to go over there and shoot the ball in my face. That's trash talking. 
But he, he would tell you before the play even started. He'd tell you where he's going. He'd tell you when he catches There's nothing Ooh. to do about it. And it was great trash talking because it wasn't vulgar. I mean, he right. wasn't pounding his chest. You can just be standing next to him. You know, I would jump out and try to block a shot on rotation, and, and he'd say, thing. Scott. You, you jump high, but you don't jump that high. You can't get this. <laughs> so, Scott, <laughs> you're a little too late. Scott, you're not getting that. Which, why are you even jumping? Why are you <laughs> running out of <laughs> it? It's a it whole game. He'd say something like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, and he talked the whole game, and it was, you know, after the game and after years of thinking about it, you're like, right. man, that dude, why he's one of the greatest players ever played. He was ridiculous. He came on here. <laughs> Our sportscaster played uh, the Superman theme when he was talking about him that night after the game. <laughs> oh, really? Because he did everything. Uh, right. Points, rebounds, assists, uh, just steals, you name it. Larry has such a great mind for the game. I had a lot of respect for him as a competitor. That competitive nature, the work ethic, because I asked a lot of questions. You know, playing with Byron Scott, I asked him a lot of questions. Eddie Jones, Magic, um, James Worthy, Kurt Rand Man, RIP Kobe, bro. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't like a big fan of basketball until like I moved to like North America and whatnot. But it's just like, rest in peace to Kobe, bro. This man, this man is just like, he just a different beast, bro. Like, I was seeing some highlights and it's just like, bro, how? This man would shoot with like four defenders on him and still make the shot. Like, <laughs> he was just a different beast. Different. Rambus. All the Laker greats, I would always sit down and just ask them questions. What actually happened there? What did you feel there? Why? You know, Bird tough to defend? Why? Because you look slow as shit to me. So it's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I'm missing something. So, like, tell me what I'm missing. You know what I mean? You know, like I was saying, uh, growing up in Boston, people all used to always talking about that he can't jump, he can't do this, he can't do that. And, you know, a lot of my friends was like that, you know. So, I, you know, I got to the league. I called all my friends back up. I said, you know, all that trash that you were talking, you mm -hmm. need to squash all that. This, this man is great. Whatever you were saying, for a man who can't jump, he's demolishing everybody. He's doing it all. Bro, I'm going to say this, right? Athleticism, athleticism is like 40% of basketball and like the rest 60 is like all fundamentals. Like he can be, he can jump, he can jump out the building. He can run like, you know what I'm saying? He can be Hussein Bolt on the court. If you can like pass properly or have the IQ or shoot properly, like it doesn't matter, bro. It's all about the fundamentals and us having the skill set. On everybody, he's doing it on the best defensive players in the league. Yeah, I never forget driving and I'm listening to a game. It's New Mexico State playing Indiana State. I don't really care about the game, but I New Mexico State is right up the streets from El Paso, and I went to UTEP, and we're big mm. rivalries. So I'm hoping that Indiana State will beat New Mexico State. And I'm listening <laughs> to the radio, and I have no clue of the players on either team. All of a sudden. This name keeps coming. Bird. He goes to the right. Bird. He makes the shot. Bird. I said, God damn, who is Bird? <laughs> a bird. You know, here's Bird. And Bird. bird. This and, and Bird. Oh, did you see the pass that Bird Ooh. made? I can't see it, but I'm just trying to imagine it. When the time I got to the end, I said, damn, that brother can play. <laughs> when I got the newspaper the next morning and saw Larry's picture, I said, damn. <laughs> Larry, they want you, you, you know, be honest with you. The young lady that say you were her favorite player, mine too. I love you too, Magic, but not as much as I like Bird. People always talk about great basketball players, and they don't never mention him to be up in that round. But Larry Bird was called. Thank you. I fuck, bro, I agree 100%. People don't talk about Larry Bird the way how they talk about the other greats, and I hate that, bro. I hate that because. When you're watching the game, Larry Bird is demolishing all the other greats everyone is hyping, but just not Larry. I, I don't understand the disrespect, bro. I don't know because Larry Bird you could, you used to demolish Michael Jordan and people are just such big Michael Jordan fan, you know, just like, just never talk about him. But I mean, it's, it's sad, bro. Oh, I don't think nobody ever could get out with him. You ask Magic. That's why Magic had a run and he was mad when he had to retire in 92 because of what he was going to be missing with Larry Bird. Uh -huh. And then you remember Larry Bird took two more years and then he quit because he said his main guy who he wanted to play <laughs> against is gone. I'm going to tell this story. We're in LA and I'm hurt. They got a pull hamstring. 
So I'm not playing tonight. So I can't oh, play I know against the Celtics. You know I'm killing myself. You know, Larry warming up. The anthem is sung and get introduced. And that right before they go out on the court, Larry comes down. He says, you know what? Since you're here, I'm going to put a show on for you. So you just sit back and watch, okay? Don't worry. I'm going to put a show on for you. And I'm like, man, get out of my face, man. <laughs> want to hear that. You know, that's Celtics and the Lakers. And he went out. I think he scored 38 points, about 20 rebounds, Ooh. about 15 assists. And every shot he would shoot, Not he would turn to me. Every time he hit one, he'd look at me. I think that's a mind game. Larry Bird is smart. That's a mind game that threw you off at of your game. And it just and him doing that also giving him self-confidence. So it's all about that mind game. And I said, boy, you know, the thing about it that I love about you is that most guys talk trash and can't bag it up. But Mr. Bird, you know you can bag your trash talking up. <laughs> And last but not least, I'm going to say this because you told me one lie. You only told me one lie in your career. Good. Only one. <laughs> and you only lied to the fans and all the people in the world one time. Do you know what that lie was? You don't remember, do you? Larry Bird said that there would be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, mm. there will never, ever, Facts. ever be another Larry Bird. Facts. And so, he's mine, and I signed it to you, to uh, the greatest basketball player ever, but more important, a friend forever. That is so wholesome, considering like the whole like huge history Lakers and Celtics has against each other and whatnot. For the two, like, you know, of the greats of each of the team to come together and like acknowledge and you know, pay their respects and whatnot. That's real. That's what that's what basketball is all about, bro. At the end of the day, it's all about the sports and it's uplifting each other and whatnot. And that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments where y'all rank Larry Bird for y'all top ten. If he's in y'all top ten, where does he stand? And like, comment, subscribe, join the fam, and I'll see y'all for the next one.